And welcome to the after after party. Uh, of course, uh, after party is a popular uh, semi or twice monthly segment we do on uh, K Wave News, and so uh, we're always running out of time to talk about things. And this is the extra portion. That's right. And you know, during the TV broadcast, we talked a lot about war reparations. And so, should we continue the discussion? I think we're kind of done with the war reparations. And uh, well, guys, I guess. <laughs> Some of the topics we, <laughs> the we covered budget. over the, the, the budget, budget, right? The um, budget. Well, I want to talk about with the budget, just right off the, the top, yeah. how there was the provisions uh, related to the changing of the qualifications for... The lowering. Yeah, okay, lowering of the qualifications for the chief of police uh, position. It was the, you had to have 15 years of progressive experience, or you could have a bachelor's degree. Initially in, in the... Current law, you you have to have both. both. And so I'm wondering, have you guys heard why they wanted to even introduce this bill? I know Talina, um, she had worked on legislation. She was pissed about it. Yeah. Yeah, because she you just think? got done. You know, she just got done strengthening <laughs> mm -hmm. the requirements, and she was like, "We just dealt with this." Yeah. And Adeloupe, uh, you know, I gotta say, it was random. It was out of the blue. It was buried in the budget bill. Mm -hmm. well, that's my question. Why is it buried in the budget bill? Okay. It should have been its own in bill. the budget it, bill. You know, I don't know. Maybe the, maybe the, you know the rules of the engagement have changed, mm -hmm. but that I would have just said this is not germane, right? You know, and and get this out of here. The problem with that, Senator, is you have a bunch of senators up there who are basically rubber stamps for ad loop, and while it may not be germane to you or to you know most people with common sense, to them it's just something that was going to get through. Yeah. Well, I, I, first off. I don't agree with lowering the standards mm -hmm. for the chief of police. And I, I saw your newscast earlier, nor do I agree with the standard of lowering the standards for police officers. Okay? Um, I was, I'm, I'm from the Guam Police Department. I was yeah. part of, you know, when Department of Public Safety was there. Right. The standards are there for a reason. Okay? And, you know, first off, you were going to say we're Guam's finest, but... <laughs> okay. Guam's finest asterisk but for that one. Okay, I'm curious what you think because this kind of seems like it could be a union. It, issue. it could be a union issue, and it, it is. Um, the union always comes in and says that we always have the, the hardest working individuals. Um, if you take teachers, for instance, we're always staying back after school where they're on the weekends. Uh, we've always wanted to uphold rigorous standards for teachers. We wanted to make sure that teachers, when they go into the classroom, are prepared for the material they're supposed to be teaching. But our budgets over the years, they have lowered the qualifications. Take, for instance, our teachers um, in charter schools. We don't have them um, certified. Right. We give them money, but we don't expect them to follow the 14 points. Yeah, uh, uh, that's a... So, well, another, yeah, another and not to digress from the point on that, um, but uh, with our um, police chief, to lower down the qualifications of that, it needs to be increased. It needs to be improved. Somebody with 15 years only, we want them to run the division for um, department. I, the, the, the department mm -hmm. after 15 years of service only. Uh, I'd like to have somebody that's been in there for several more years just to make sure that they know the, the top and the bottom right. all the way out. Well, a good, I don't think that anyone's going to toughen the requirements mm -hmm. any more than Senator Nelson already did. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, Juan, i got to ask you, I think this is something that, you know, we can cross the aisle with. Was this a stupid idea? Well, uh, first of all, the, the location of where you were trying to do it, I think, is actually make, make very little sense to me. Mm -hmm. But this entire budget process has been making very little sense right. to me. You know, it, it is the number <laughs> one function in, the gov in a legislature is to pass a budget. Mm -hmm. And you're giving them basically five days to do it. Crazy. And mm -hmm. and then today we spend the All afternoon day. right about four hours discussing yeah. how we're gonna use our surplus money when we get extra money because we're not even discussing how we should use our actual funds that we mm -hmm. have and know we need. Uh, but we're saying no, no, no. When we get the extra revenues, we're gonna put them over here and we're gonna move them over there. But I think I think uh, that they're discussing that off the bat is because the budget bill didn't provide for those things for these different agencies. I mean, you have education. But that's yeah, in but, the miscellaneous yeah. portion but, but, of the bill. They have right. It's in the miscellaneous through. portion of the bill, right there with the police chief qualification. Yeah. But, but hey, but, and but, also hiring a deputy right, chief of yeah. police. 
Okay, yeah. I didn't but, know but that. Again, and a deputy of customs, yeah. unclassified both. But they were all yeah. striked. Yeah. Yeah. When, <laughs> when I look at doing a budget, right, yeah. the first thing is funding the principal functions of the government. Public health. Public health. Safety. Public education. Public safety. Right. And, a, and the administration of justice. And the administration. <laughs> before, before you finish funding. Wait, where's the administration in there? Be, once you fund those at the levels that they are need to be funded, then you start looking, how do I address the roads? How do I address the, the, the other more insular and uh, ancillary services that are required and needed, but make no sense if I don't have a public safety on board first. Right. And so, so that is where I look at this budget. There was no questioning at all of the numbers that were being provided and saying, wait a second, well, why are we spending it. so mm -hmm. much money in public safety and so few police officers? Why is it that the attorney general office has only seven criminal prosecutors when there's 14 slots? Mm -hmm. You know, it, and then ev then we complain where everybody is just being given a six month sentence. Is they don't have time. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have one yeah. guy that's Terrible. doing double duty. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to see uh, the discussion and debate on the Department of Education's uh, portion of the budget and how instead of it being you know just DOE, all of it goes to you, but now it's like okay, every school. Right? Every school is going to get a certain amount. They struck that? They struck, they struck that. that. Yeah. Oh, they did. Okay, well, that's good. And that was kind of like a, what, WTF? Like, <laughs> really, Joe and Augustine? Like, where, where did this freaking come from? Where did it come from? Like, where, what? It didn't wow. come from the superintendent. It, it didn't. didn't come from right. the That's what I'm saying. In fact, the principals had come out saying yeah. they don't want the extra burden. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and <laughs> it reduces their purchasing power. You know, it works best if you get to have DOE central office say, we're buying this for all the schools instead of one school saying, I'm only taking a few. Right. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know from. what he was thinking. I mean, you know, hey, new kid with the appropriation. It took him, what, three times to get the budget? introduced that's crazy so and, and you know going to Juan what he's saying about uh, five days you have these yeah. Republicans right which one of your, your minority leaders came out and said um, that it wasn't enough time they all have the, both your minority leaders right? <laughs> Jim Whalen and Will Castro right? <laughs> <laughs> so they come Is out five days enough time so it's <laughs> not it's you, not really you've it's been there not. five days and no, I think but I think they don't want the scrutiny because Wait, are this we going to count Friday as, as six days this is just something okay. administration I mean you, you're supposed to get the memo you're just supposed to stamp it and push it through and that's that and I, I love the rule of, of like if we pass a page we can't go back that was weird. Oh, and, yeah. and, so and that was, was Senator St. Augustine today was like, we're on page six, we can't go back. And I'm really like, okay, I think the budget should be one of the most transparent processes in the government and they're really not being transparent and I think it's pretty obvious. You know, and, and, and maybe it's, it's at night, but I still remember when I was taking a test, rereading my document and realizing, hey, on page two, I made a mistake. Can't go I back there. fix it out. And she address it, and, and it's sort of weird that it's locally the they will tell Augustine me, rule of test, no, 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 you, no, you, you, you change that leave, you got to leave the mistake there. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't make common sense for, the, for, for us people that are involved in business, because we go... For anybody. You know, if, if, if I'm dealing with a reality that I have a mistake on page two of, of my application, or my loan document, or my bank document. Can't go back. Eh, you know, I, I should be allowed to correct it. Yeah. Well, was there any word on whether or not they were going to include any of Senator James Moylan's uh, They're bills? They're not, yeah. That's just Unless not Will Castro happen? talks to the... No, but, I, and I, you know, uh, one, I gotta agree with you again. I, this, um, Joe St. Augustine takes three tries to introduce the budget, and then we're supposed to take his word for it, and we can't go back and look, it's just crazy. Yeah. And then anybody who tries to be transparent and bring some clarity to this process is going to be labeled an, an uh, obstructionist. Like uh, Taylor Taito, I, I, I have to say she made me laugh when she said, like, hey, this paragraph is half in page three and the other half is in page four. Does that mean I need to wait until page four to address the bottom line or should I be able to go back to page three? Yeah, really, I think it's Sanjay. I mean, when they get to DOE, 
And well, I mean, you guys, not just DOE, now you guys have uh, guys in public safety who are part mm -hmm. of your union. So pretty, pretty much all of Gov Guam. Every right. We, we cover just about every agency in Gov Guam. And so it does affect um, GFT because um, all the, the budget is almost copy and paste from last year when they decided not to pay any of the increments. And this time Sad. around, they're paying the increments, but there's no funding for it. We hear, oh, don't worry, there's enough money to pay the increments. But when we look through, we might be short there. Just a little bit. Yeah. Increments, aren't and they? So again, they're going to no, put it on they, you. They froze the increments. We, I'm just we don't kidding. Have yeah. the increments. So there was a forty-one thousand yeah. yeah, dollar. Yeah, there's a forty-one thousand dollar increment, which we can talk about in a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> or we could just do it now. I mean, on the budget, though, you agree that five days is not enough time, and I, I feel like it's an yeah. egregious. It's very egregious, and I don't. Other than Will Castro and Jimmy Moylan, I'm surprised not more people are making a big deal out of this. Right, and you know, if you get to ask me, I think we could roll back our BPT back to four percent. Uh, we do have extraordinary amounts of money that's being wasted just on rent. Um, there's the governor's mansion, uh, governor's house. Uh, I don't know what you don't want call to call it. it. <laughs> party house. It's a party house. It's six million dollars to party. <laughs> Complete with fireworks. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's six million dollars a year. Uh, that's six million dollars that we don't have to pay. There's 14 million just of all the agencies renting. That's 20 million right there. You want to roll back taxes? We have space to roll back taxes, and we don't even have to touch any of the government employees. Yeah. Wow. 2020? Um, Sharma 2020. Right? Well, uh, who knows? Welcome what to about the party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd probably be the <laughs> so, Senator, so, so, Senator, We can talk I mean, better you, that way. You've done budgets. You watch this. What are your thoughts? First off, I'm a, I fear what's going to get done on the last day of August. Oh, boy. Because, you know, they can go in and say, all right, budgets pass plenty flaws right okay and then so we're gonna end up with a, a year of or mores yeah yeah we were back in past legislatures we were very uncomfortable that we only had one month a month mm -hmm. God, yeah, we would to be able to discuss <laughs> even in, in past legislatures we started budget processes since April right yeah. okay and we regurgitated and we went through a lot of it back you know, and there was a lot of anticipation. There was a lot of trepidation. I just, I fear what's going to be, what's going to be concocted, for lack of a better term, uh, in the next four days. Um, you really want to pass the budget legislature? Stay past 10 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Well, they had to leave to go to the party. Well. <laughs> Is there, I, there's like, not like, a like, law or standing rule you can't. Does. You can't. I uh, guess th th there was a standing rule. I think the rule is that you have to finish it by the end of by, the August. No, no, no. no I'm talking about 10 o'clock at 10 night. Yeah. Oh. No, they have. Oh, there's just, there's a rule in the standing oh, rules oh, that, yeah. that says all legislative activity ceases at 10 o'clock. Unless mm -hmm. you're at a party. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I fear that because, as one caller stated, <laughs> your primary right. function is the purse strings, is to manage the purse strings of the government. You're looking at what they're proposing to be, and what I fear is going to happen is going to top the one billion mark, yeah. okay, um, of a number of things that we're going to make promises to, we're going to, okay, to pay for, and we're going to be doing this, and we're going to be getting more more of your money be, to be able to do this, and it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Well, I just even okay. remember last year, the budget, I mean, they were talking about it like he said in like May, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And Is it because it's the new administration? Are, are we still going to give that party. pass, the new administration pass? No, no, same political just... party. It's, 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 uh, before you normally had that, that debate about the, the dem Democratic legislature, Republican yeah. uh, out of the loop, and then you had a, before you had the other way around, you had a Republican legislature with a Democratic out of the loop. Right now, you have both, no both the same party uh, controlling both, and I and I really think that the legislative leadership uh, underestimated how complicated and how important this process really is. Juan, and I think they did that because they just figured Auntie Lou's going to give us a budget and we're just going to slam it through. I really think that was the case. Yeah, it but, appears. To but me. yeah, but you 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 look at at the projections that they're looking at at the Which actual ones? budget they presented. <laughs> And, and I, I see the things in a completely different way. And I am concerned that we're betting on a completely rosy scenario for next year uh, 
with the military uh, revenues continue to grow in the island, where if between us, if there's a no new programmatic agreement next year, that stops, like, like mm -hmm. it stops decks on its track. Then, then you end up on no tourism uh, emergency coming again. So let's hope that North Korea negotiations by the Trump administration continue correctly. And on top of that, I look at the hospital, and I know right now we have the President Trump did the waiver of 100% of the Medicaid Medicare matching funds, but that ends in October of this year. There's another bill that's moving its way through the through Congress that was supposed to waive it for two more years, and everybody's banking on it. But guess who was supporting that bill? Was the government of Puerto Rico? Mm, that yeah. was the main driver for that piece of legislation. And right now, I don't think anybody in D.C. remembers ever talking to Ricky Rosselló. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, I mean, even our own congressman was so close with him. They ate mofongo together. And, you know. <laughs> so, so when you look at that, I'm like, hey, shouldn't we? be sort of focusing on making sure that that bill passes. That, that's that's mm -hmm. a two-year blessing of we don't have to pay 55% right. into the hospital. Uh, but instead, we're, we're sort of looking at how to spend our excess process, profits that we're going to receive. And, and I think there's a fight over that. And I think why they, what, that was one of the things that was brought up first is that I think the administration is eyeing that money as a slush fund. And certain senators know that there is going to be an excess, and they want to allocate it towards, you know, I don't know, mm -hmm. more useful things like repairing the hospital. Well, 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 you have a deficit. Well, well, I don't know. Is, is well, there anything in you. the budget that cuts expenses? I haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't let, heard about but, it. But let, let, let me ask you a question. There should Good be question, the, Brie. the first $7.5 yeah. million of excess funds, right? Mm -hmm. That should go to war claims. Right, so all these extra revenues that they're talking about that they're going to be getting must be in addition to those 7.5. So, you know, it sounds really positive frame of mind on their part. Uh, right, but what, Senator Blossett, how could there be a surplus if we're in a deficit? I don't know. And, I, I, you know, I, I mm -hmm. pray to God that next year we don't fall on our face because this administration from the get-go, I mean, they hired all the deputy directors. People are getting paid twenty to thirty thousand dollars more than the Calvo Tenorio administration. Not just one or two people. I mean, as a rule, the special assistants, uh, just salaries and, and expenses, I think, are astronomically higher than they used to be. But and based on their experience and what they bring to the table, yeah. don't bring that. Never works. But it and also work the fact Eddie that there's it. only <laughs> one chief of staff. There's not one. There's one chief of staff governor, and, and a deputy no chief of staff that combined make 250 grand in just salary. Mm -hmm. well, well, meanwhile, teachers are 34,000 students. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and we're giving, a, you know, we're trying to give Esther Agagi a $41,000 raise, and teachers can't even get a lousy 3.5%. It's ridiculous. When, I, I don't, I don't know. Right. Okay, back in, in <laughs> Governor Comacho's days, I was the Homeland Security Advisor, the Chief of Operations for the Governor of Guam and the governor's authorized representative. And he got 140 grand? No, and I got $72,000. Oh, man. All right? You're in the wrong today, administration. <laughs> today, there are people at each of those plus. positions that make about more than $80,000. Yeah. Right. So, oh, so, by, the 80 is low. So, yeah, so but he, still. That's what the spokespeople make. Yeah. So, so here for, for me is, is very interesting. When you start an administration, the salaries on the first uh, year are very low. Usually. Uh, and, and then as time comes, because your administration is a lame duck and your second term and you want to keep people for those last two years, you start increasing the salaries little by little. And this administration came in at the, and looked at the salary the last day of an eight-year term and said, that's our, that's our starting point. Right. And even that is not good enough. And, and it, it is problematic when you're not looking at a rosy I think scenario. it's problematic when they don't even know that, you know, trying to give someone a $41,000 raise is just nonsense. Mm -hmm. That's what's problematic is how out of touch with reality yeah. a lot of these responses and these decisions are. Well, well, he, here's, here's where, I, where I'm looking at. Any property investment of over a million dollars now get taxed at the double, double. Double, double taxation. Mm -hmm. So good luck in getting, in explaining that to your foreign investor that wants to come here and invest in the Guam market. Say, hey, by the way, you're going to pay twice as much tax as anybody else. Mm -hmm. Then <clears throat> we, we raise the GRT to five, the, the 5% instead of, sorry. Uh, so 
on your profits. We're going to take some of those too. And, and on, on top of that, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, on, on top of that, we, we are going to raise everybody's salary that we have in this administration. It is problematic. If you ask me, the federal government has a, a rule that I think we should adopt. The highest paid person in the entire federal government is the President of the United States. The second highest person in the entire federal government is the, is the Vice President of the United States. Mm -hmm. And every other salary derives in a lower percentage as its maximum base, based on those two salaries. Our governor's earning 90000 $90, mm -hmm. $90, and I have aides that are earning not 5% or 10% or, or more than she is. It, it, that, it, that makes no sense to me. I, I, what makes no sense to me is this idea that people who weren't in the private sector doing an outstanding job somehow need to get paid 120 grand when they didn't even have a job. Like Tony Bobalta didn't have a job last year. <laughs> and they bring him in and they pay him 120 grand and they say, well, like, oh, we have to compete with the private sector. Or, oh, we have to do it because of the experience. And it's a bunch of nonsense. Yeah. Well, I thought he was a consultant yeah, to back he, up he was a consultant. Oh, okay. at Bank oh. of Guam? I didn't know that. I didn't know, but what I'm saying yeah. is it's not like he was a CEO of some car. Not, and I don't mean to single Tony out. Uh, anybody, you take your pick. I mean, the, we the invited argument. invited him to come on. Yeah, Just and we did invite him to come on, but yeah. he found out you were coming. and No, he said it was going inter <laughs> to interfere with his happiness. Actually, hour, it was so. Sanji, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, you know, the salaries, it's just ridiculous. And let's talk about this $41,000 raise thing, because I think this is something that I discovered through a Freedom of Information Act request, and no one in Adeloupe knew about it. And then they try to spin it and say that, oh, it was a mistake. No, first. First it was, there was money in the money. budget. Yeah, yeah, so this actually takes a little while to unpack because there were, every time we turned around, there was a different spin. Yeah. But the first one was that there was money in the budget that allowed mm -hmm. for this raise. Well, but, but it goes back to, it's... That wasn't it's even our, the final it's, answer. It's, no. it's the people's money. It's not as, oh, we got a surplus. Let's figure out how to spend it and in, in us. You know, if you're going to spend yeah. it fixing a pothole in the street, I get it. And I, I'm all for it. If you need to rebuild the bridge, let's go rebuild the bridge. Yeah. Uh, if age, you're going to fix the school, school, fix the school. Time and Sanchez need you know, repair. There's right. Any but uh, need but repair. to say, well, oh, we got some, we found some extra revenue. Let's increase everybody's salary again. One more time. And I, but you know what? They ran on this. They ran on I'm in. Like, they're going to reward people who are in. They didn't run on we're going to help all the people. It was very exclusive. It was like, are you in or are you out? And... That that's lot, politics. Yeah, well, I mean, that was yeah. really obvious. Didn't they also I don't, run I don't know if there's been the another BPT? campaign where they're like, hey, are you, <laughs> are you in, man? <laughs> Didn't they also campaign on rolling back the BPT? Campaign on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 so back to this Aggie thing. It, first it was there's money in the budget, and then there was... Oh, there was a, it was a flaw. It was, or I made a mistake, I misspoke, I didn't have all the information. Right. And so they uh, made Janella fall on her sword, and mm -hmm. she said that she misspoke. And then after that, it, it was... They didn't get all the proper vetting. They didn't get the vetting. Yeah. We, need to, we need to tighten our procedures. And then it was, oh, my, Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio signed it when the governor was off island, and she didn't know about it. And but, then it became, yeah, it was a mistake, but you know what? We're kind of thinking about giving her a raise anyway. Yeah. So there was just so much BS, and let's just call it, it was just a bunch of BS. Like, if we had never gotten that document, they would have never taken the raise away. Other people would have got raises, and we've seen it. It's not the first time there's been $20,000, $10,000, $5,000 pay adjustments. Hell, they just ignored They just had a, a surplus that they gave employees uh, raises, and they called it a pay shift. So they call it a lot of different things, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, if teachers and government employees, and that's all it is for me. It's the, it's the fairness. If they can't get 3.5%, why are we going to give somebody $41,000? You're right. It needs to be more fair. Yeah. Uh, we need to make sure that the ones on the, the lower, on the, on the bottom half, that they have room to uh, go up because the more money they have, the more money will be circulating in the um, economy. You know, if you get to have them, uh, just one person taking all the money that everybody could have had and enjoyed, well, that's not going to come into the economy. The next five not days, for everybody. I'll include that in the budget. 
in the next <laughs> as, as long as past four. page Sorry, four. Four. Yeah. four days. As long as they can't go back. Because right? if it's on page right now, one, right? you can't go back. Page six. Okay. Just create, create a whole new page for the missing. <laughs> so let me ask you this: What <laughs> happens when that day comes and they do give Estragi a big raise? Well, let's and they go, say, "Hey, we told you." Let's we're go. Let's do go it. back to what to what Juan Carlos said it about where they where their their starting point was. Okay, and they took that starting point, which was okay. It, it may have been high, but then they upped it a little more. All right, and then one of the I remember one of the justifications for doing this is we they wanted parity amongst their leadership. Well, your parity amongst your leaders, you bumped it up. Go down, to begin I think. With. <laughs> bring everybody <laughs> down and bring yeah. parity here. Yeah. Okay. And that, you're right. That was one of the things they said. It was like, oh well, we gave her a 41 grand raise because basically everybody's making so much money. 82 yep. just wasn't enough. I mean, yeah. who wants to say that? who? Tells these people to say that. Like, you don't, I think Adeloupe should make a practice of looking in the mirror and saying these things out loud because it just sounds freaking ridiculous to use that as, oh, we gave her 41 grand because well, everyone else is making so much and she really stuck out because she was only making 82. Even though the last guy who outranked her made 82 grand. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. On his last day. On his last day. Yeah. Well, and it, it goes back to, yeah. Um, first off, what are your priorities? Okay. Um, I remember being in the, the last time I was here, you asked me to grade them. Right. Okay. And mm -hmm. I said, give them time to learn. Okay. Let me guess, you, you're the, ready to grade them now. The, 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 you know, I, I tell you what, <laughs> seven months has, eight, eight months. Drum roll. Okay. It has, has, has been a whole lot. Yeah. Well, you can't grade anybody that hasn't been to class. Oh. Oh. And I've been got, skipping school for the last oh, eight months. Come on, get it straight. What's really concerning is when you're, like your, your communications department. Terrible. Okay? You want to cause chaos in, in the community? Shut down the communications. Or give up, or, or not give the right information. You're in this, you're in the business, all right? You know how vital, how crucial it is to be able to provide that. That should be the expectation right up at the top. There shouldn't be... Oh, I wasn't informed. You are the director of communications. You belong in the communications department. Okay? I hate to say this, but this is where a lot of, in, in, in not just in government service, but, but community-wide, there's this thing that let's sit and wait for it to come. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't do that in communications. Yeah. You can't do that when you're in charge of the news for this area. Go look for it. Mm -hmm. Go look for it. Okay. I agree. I got to say, I mean, and you know, I know both or how many of them are there in the communications department? Yeah. I just, know I just feel like they, they just aren't equipped to do the job that they were hired to do. And part of that is because you get people who come from the media doesn't necessarily mean they know about the government. Mm -hmm. And so when we in the media ask a question, like I could sit here and show you messages on my WhatsApp to Janela Carrera that are just left on blue check marks. No response. But they've been here, Chris. They were sitting in those seats. Right. They, they were. They, you, you taught them well. But if the governor doesn't give them the authority to go out and speak, okay, with, between the communications people, I think combined, they've done about two or three interviews. Like, if you can't even get your communications people out front <coughs> to address the media, that's a big problem. But who's to but say that they're, they're not allowed to do interviews? Well, I don't know. You know. I mean, whatever so. it is, whether mm -hmm. if they're not allowed or... Mm -hmm. Um, they just can't, or maybe it was that interview I did with Janella where, you know, she just ended up looking foolish, talking about a pay correction. And ever, ever since then, I, you know, it's just Haven't been difficult it. to yeah. get an interview. But I think it's a problem, you know. In the last administration, like whether or not Oya was telling the truth, I mean, you got the impression that she knew about government operations, and when the media asked her something, she was prepared to answer. Mm -hmm. And if she wasn't, it didn't take her five days to go run and find somebody with, it, with she came information. She an answer. Yeah. yeah. These okay. guys, it's like you ask a question, I mean, you're lucky if you get an answer. Well, it, 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 uh, you, you, you got to remember you're getting a, a, a governor that comes from the private sector. And private sector and media normally have a different type of relationship. Sure. Uh, and, and Governor Calvo was very much aware, as being in public service for a very long time, he had a very good control of media, understood where it, where it, how important it is. Yeah. Uh, 
Hey, I, one thing I'll say about Governor Cabo is he wasn't a hider. He didn't hide. If right. like you wanted to ask him something or he was there, he would answer it. Uh, this administration, I'm just, I'm just not seeing whether it's the they lack the confidence or if, I mean, let's just be honest. The governor misspeaks a lot of the times when when he given it, when she does interviews, she says stuff like, "I want to keep the BPT forever," like who says that? Well, that's because she's not really a politician. She's yeah. a businesswoman. <laughs> right. well, so that's the, her background. Yeah. Well, it's, well, she's she, she's no, but, but I think what, what's problematic well, with a, it she is that... She was a former senator. Yeah. She was yeah. a former she's, senator, she's a but former senator. she never sugarcoat anything. She was mm -hmm. also a nurse. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. And I think, I think coming from the private sector, there's maybe, maybe mm -hmm. a slight train of thought that says we're not really accountable to the public because we come from this. And that's kind of what I get is I, I don't really feel that they... Have a, they think they have a need to justify any of their decisions or to, to be transparent about them. I, I really, I, I actually have I mean, a different point true. of view on it. I, I really think it is, uh, she wants to be judged by her actions. Mm -hmm. Like she, the, it's, it's sort of like, I'm focused on getting the result, final result on this and media serves a distraction, which in private business it is. You're like, I want to do my contract. I want to end up getting the air, airline route between uh, uh, Nagoya and, and, and Guam. Uh, but when you're in public government and you are being paid by the citizens, there's an expectation of the community right. that you will keep them informed of what you're doing and how you're spending their money. Mm -hmm. And that is taking a little bit of time for her to get. I, I think that they're capable... They're, they're starting to show better signs, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still, it's still a ways to go before we get to a place that I feel that everybody here is going to be comfortable. Now, the problem with that is the media doesn't take too well to being, you know, brushed aside or not responded Just to. Just to be fair, though, she yeah. has done interviews after, no, yeah, yeah. after her okay. proclamation signings, albeit we maybe have only two minutes, yeah. you know, for all the media to talk I didn't, to her. You're right. I didn't and say they Josh don't ever do interviews. has been available to you. He yeah. apologized. He owned up to... The mistake for right. signing off okay. on the you know at the end of the day she's point taken okay so you know K fifty seven all the time yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah I could radio. say almost every morning I turn it on I hear I hear Lou on K fifty seven at the end of uh, at the end of the day they're watching this podcast yeah mm -hmm. they're learning a lot mm -hmm. and they know tomorrow start anew <laughs> well tomorrow, you wonder why we don't <laughs> respond to you Chris yeah. hello <laughs> tomorrow move forward make lessons learned move forward. Do better. Yeah, I think that's I what think we asked them to do. What my thing is Please. is consistency. Like, if you're gonna be accessible, then be accessible. But if there's no rhyme or reason to your lack of accessibility or your, you know, uh, need to be transparent, that's where I have a problem. Because yeah, okay, we got three minutes to ask questions one week. The next week we don't get any time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it's just not consistent. And we're a consistent <coughs> business. We need something yeah, every day. Every day. You know? So what grade do you give him, Sanjay? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, these guys endorsed the governor. <laughs> I, I'd like to say the governor gets an A. Uh, oh. She's doing what she can. Uh, she jumped right in. Damn, that's an easy A, dude. Th that is an easy A, and, and here's, here's the biggest reason why. Let's go. Uh, when it comes to um, receiving exclusive recognition on behalf of government employees, she was quick to give um, GFT four different uh, government agencies. With the previous administration, we were told, no, you can't have police officers. Guam law says we can deny, so we denied. What was the justification for denying? The previous administration said, because we could. And so we asked uh, now Congressman, Senator... Uh, Sorry, what, their, was, what, what was the question? I, were they sure yet? Because it, it uh, brings back memory, so I just want to make sure it, that it, I... This is with uh, the, the police officers when we tried to organize them. And so... Let's go ahead. Right. Yeah. So the, the previous administration had said, no, we could deny. Um, and when we asked what was the justification, they said because we can. Uh, are you law talking said about the union we, we or are you talking yeah. about the school? No, with, with the union. We're talking so, about including law enforcement into the union. And the so the, union. the current governor had uh, said that, yes, we we will go ahead and grant exclusive recognition for whoever applies. And so GFT applied, and we had that signed off. Corrections officers, police officers, they're part of GFT. And so now we, we represent. How's uh, the negotiations those. going, though? I hear some things. We're we're starting. <laughs> we're starting. They, they have their team in place. Starting now. or stalling? Uh, right. right. Well, see, but but here's the so A minus. Maybe. Uh, and so the the other is um, you know getting the the teacher pay raises to come through the nurses pay raises. 
uh, we're hoping it would be government-wide uh, to at least have the study done to see how far back we've gotten. Um, the last increment that we've had, it was really for the, the lower paying employees back in 2014. And that had done nothing for those that have been in the government for a while. Right. Yeah. You know, it seems like the only time we can get a pay raise is if we jump into the administration's office. Right. And <laughs> better position. That sounds more like a B than an A that you're giving in as far as yeah. the explanation okay. there, Sanjay. No, but, uh, you know, Maybe she, there was she an extra credit action. assignment in there she's somewhere. She's taking action. It's better than no action, and it's better than hearing no from a governor. But, uh, I, but I think, I mean, unions are usually a partisan issue. So I kind of would expect that from the last administration. But with this one, I expect them to be pro-union. And also, I just, I just really feel like I haven't heard anything about poor people or, you know, the underprivileged or the homeless. These are, these are things that I expect from a Democrat leadership, you know, for them to come out and say, hey, working class people need those increments. But they don't. It's cool. silent. Right, and you know, it's, it's not just the working class. We're not considered the working poor. Most right. of the people who work in Gov Guam. So B minus. She's she's getting there. He wants there. to give the an team A. Team is right. getting there. Okay, okay, the team okay. is getting there. Okay. And so at least fund the study and see how far back we are, and then we can progress from there. That's just the, something I noticed in the last eight months. I mean, you know, I'm in the media. I don't really see a lot of um, talk about the most disenfranchised people in our on our island. I, I just don't. I, I don't. And that's, uh, it bugs me. Right. Okay, Senator. What? Oh, said wrap who's it up. that? Yeah. I'll wrap it up. <laughs> oh, so Everyone so give no a grade. grade. I thought we were giving a grade here. Let's go. So you got to show up to class. He said, right? <laughs> no, it's, it's, Juan, class is still in session. Juan's been nice first. to Democrats yeah. lately. So what's your grade? No, it, it's uh, it's not an A. It's it's pro <laughs> it's it's, pro it's probably somewhere around a C. Okay. It's uh, it's uh, and 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 it's. She ran on a on an on a platform of transparency, uh, uh, fiscal responsibility, uh, focusing on healthcare and education, uh, and substantive issue. And all I've seen is uh, Planned Parenthood being invited to come to Guam <laughs> versus versus you have to get that in. versus uh, versus, uh. versus looking at, at getting medical. Uh, Medical, out of, examiner. out of say, medical examiners yeah, yeah, yeah. hired. Yeah. Uh, I'm 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 looking at at allowing the gambling at the casino at, at, for the liberation days to pay for fireworks that ended up uh, going on to her goodbye party there. <laughs> uh, and and uh, marijuana. Meanwhile, marijuana. the the no lowering of the five percent uh, gross receipt tax and and uh, in, instead of calling it. Uh, uh, Forever. forever, ever, forever, ever, ever, uh, ever. and 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 uh, it when when I look at, at this and then maintaining this uh, one million dollar plus double taxation on 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 time investment in the island, I I I have to say, expectation was going to be uh, fiscal responsible, business oriented government. So far, what I've seen is a socially. Uh, driven agenda, uh, legalized marijuana, which I know is one of your favorite things. I was just waiting for you to bring that up. Right? Yeah. And, and, and a problem, there hasn't been a single deportation of, uh, of, of any criminals since, since uh, the government took over. And if anything, with the Attorney General's office, when you look at the uh, agreements that they're reaching, you know, Crazy. it is more lenient than I've Crazy. ever seen Crazy. before in across the board. That's something that I think is a subject for an entire other right. after party. But yeah, the I got to agree with you. The TOC cards, the TOC I mean, case. I got to agree that I, I'm not sure what the priority is with the AG's office, but six, you know, six. I almost feel like they're over there like Googling class action lawsuits. Like, let's go get on that one. <laughs> uh, hey, there's an E. coli recall for spinach. Do we want to get on that yeah. or what? <laughs> but but uh, but but here here here's the thing. Some somebody broke into 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 our ranch, area, and uh, the person was caught sleeping in in, in a bench with his uh, drug paraphernalia, all the materials. We took photographs. We took everything, and all we kept going are, are calls from the attorney general's office. Like, do you guys want to prosecute? Because if you don't want to prosecute, we don't want to prosecute. Yeah, and we don't like, really want to prosecute either because we, we're not really prosecution lawyers. We have a background in insurance. But but it is, it is problematic because if the word starts getting out in the community, 
Yeah. Hey, you get caught, the largest... I think it's already out, Juan. You get caught <laughs> selling ice at the prison, you're going to get off on a misdemeanor official misconduct. The word yeah. is out. Yeah. What was it, the largest cocaine case in the history of Guam, and right. a person got six months? Bungled, yeah. So I think the word is out, and I think the question is, is it something that's a conscious effort or is it just incompetence? And I think both are equally no, scary. But, but I think it's something that our, uh, the governor should be sitting up with the attorney general and meeting and saying, what do you need? Is there something we're missing here? Right, is, yeah. is, what are the issues of bringing? Well, the problem you know, is every, everybody is too buddy-buddy. You got a Democrat governor, Democrat legislature, it's too buddy-buddy. I liked it better when you had Democrats and Republicans because then there's this checks and battle balance. and checks and balances. That's, I think that's the problem you got to... You know, for all intents and purposes, a Democrat AG, a Democrat legislature, Democrat governor, and but you know the thing after is, eight months, I'm not sure if I like it. It's that much. what the people voted for. Yeah, mm -hmm. people okay. are stupid. You know, as much as <laughs> as much as we want to blame them now for what is going on, you also got to recognize that it was the voice of the people yeah. that put them there. I think this is a fluke okay. election, though. I'm still and and still so going that. back to because he keeps saying we got to stop my grade. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I really want, like Sanji, I really want to give them an A. I really do. I really want them to succeed. Me too. We need that. We need that. But they're not getting an A, are they? And, uh, Let if, I, I can't give a grade right now. I can't give a grade He's right saying now. give them time. Right. Okay? But you see, now it's, it's how much time. Okay? When does, that, when does that stick break? We'll give you four days. Okay. <laughs> okay. Give By the time the they pass the budget, you better have a grade. <laughs> yeah, okay. And I've told people, I said, you know, so what do you think? I said, let's wait through this, through this budget process because you're right, okay? That is what is, when we, when we see what we're going to have to live with mm -hmm. for the next year, Sanjay may have a totally different grade. Right, yeah. Okay, and there's nothing above A. I mean, you've already expressed with, when an interview with me with the problems that you have with the budget, okay. so... Yeah. I'll tell you my biggest problem with that budget. If they pass that budget, I can guarantee you another tax increase coming in in less than a year. Because there's no way that you're going to be able to do all they want to do with it. Right. Right. Yeah. No. It, you know, uh, in all honesty, unless oh. we have textbooks in our classrooms mm -hmm. that are brand new, uh, you know that it's setting them up for failure. My wife's at home printing the textbooks already. Right. right. See, printing. that's that's how it works in DOE mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. We're having the. Shoe drive, the supply drives. We are. And so everything yeah, has so to be Yeah, so we don't need the government to fund anything because the public is picking up the slack. On, we're doing neighborhood watches because we don't have enough cops. Well, you know, and it, right. it's interesting because it then you got to go back and look at how much right. of government's responsibility today are actually the responsibility of the government. <laughs> how many things that the people are doing? Yeah, a okay. lot. I, I, I think that when you look at it, going back to what the basic tenets of what the government should provide, Everything else after that, you've really got to take a serious look yeah. as to whether or not it's government's responsibility to do this. The community, we as a community, a society, have somehow relegated all of this stuff because we're lazy. Okay? This blame goes all the way around. Okay? We don't like what's happening, you know, in the government. We put them there. We've got to work with it. Yeah. Okay? And we've got to hope that things get better. But there we is also, hope. But we there also need to convince smart people to be willing to run. This is where you're going to ask it, me to and run it is, right? Yeah, there we go. Yes. Was it 2020? Yes. Uh, pick a position. 2020, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This but, is but you know, an unintended e effect of what they're doing is that the community started to uh, organize itself outside of, outside of the government. Uh, and you have all this, the villages starting to say, we need to self-police ourselves. Right. We need to take care of ourselves yeah. and assist each other. And once you start that ball rolling in a government, it's, it becomes really hard later for the government to control them. Say, wait a second, we don't need you to be doing that. that those are function of the government. And no, I think no one's you, saying that now. And I, and I think you might end up seeing some of that in the next upcoming elections or the, ne or the, or the one after that with, with referendums. Because then the community says like, well, why do we need the legislature to decide what we need to do if we need 4% or we need 5%? Why don't we just put well, it in a referendum? I was thinking more of like, if I was to run against anybody, I, I mean, one of the biggest things I would campaign on is we're out here keeping ourselves safe. Yes. Mm -hmm. What are you guys doing? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
And, and we're looking, actually it's funny because we were talking to the former chief of police the other day, so try to, I think that he would be a great candidate if he were to come to the legislature. Understands the need of the department and what they really need to be looking at funding and how to do it. Yeah, well we have a former police officer in there now and I don't know what he's doing with public safety. There's two of them. Yeah, well who's the other one? Joseph Augustine and Pito. Oh, San Augustine was a... He was a police officer? He and I shift together. No way. He just can't talk about it because... He was the chief of police, too? No, Can't I don't go think back. he was chief of no. police, but he was a police officer. <laughs> but he and, I, he and I served together. We were in oh, the same wow. precinct. Wow. And then, yeah, so. So hopefully, the next after party, we're going to get a grade from you. Fortunately, not, we're not going to have one in four days. Nope. <laughs> you missed your chance. I'm with, I I'm with maybe <laughs> then, huh? I'm with Senator. I want them to, see, you know. We yeah, all do. Yeah, yeah we, we all do, do yeah. man. Okay. Why would we I want do. anyone, why would we want them to fail? We want them to succeed. And we, for the children. And let's do everything. No, we we live here, for right? Yeah. Her, yeah. The Home. failure of this administration is, is an economic situation that I, I don't think none of us want to see for our children. Right. We need this island to prosper and move forward. Uh, we might disagree in the way that we should head there. And I might be seeing a lot of red flags coming up right now and saying, <laughs> you know, we better be careful. Yeah. Uh, but our job is to bring those up. Uh, the job of the government is to review those, take those in, and decide how they want to move forward. And they'll make the decision because they were the ones that were elected by the people. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll see. The Laysage is going to get their grade uh, in a year and a half. Ooh, man, I think it's going to be we'll exciting. Comes. I yeah. predict a lot of these guys who got in are going to get right back out. Well, I, I'm, I'm still well, saying. I'm saying think... there's a movement already for recall. Yeah, what? that's what I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and a lot of them are waiting to see what's going to happen with this budget process. Oh, so maybe in four days. Okay. <laughs> and, We're all waiting, know, four days. Well, that sounds you know, exciting. You know, Somebody you know. knows something? Yeah. It's on Holla, Facebook. If you know you heard it here on the After Party yeah. Podcast. Yeah. It's recall. on Facebook. They don't say lies on Facebook. But only the Democrats. Right? <laughs> <laughs> They're only going to recall the yeah. Democrats. Well, thank you guys so well, much for joining you. us. It's We're, we're thank out you. of time. Actually, not really, but we've talked... I think we've talked about everything. Yeah. I mean, there, we didn't get to touch on um, the drug problem, which, I mean, that's a whole other after party. There is. And I'll tell you, yeah. we're doing it all wrong. Yeah. We're doing it all Please don't say legalize all drugs. No, no. We shouldn't have legalized the marijuana. But the drug issue is a supply and demand problem, okay? And I, I, I get it. I get going after those that, that, that traffic in the drugs. But did you know that Nash, the national average or the average amount of drugs that you confiscate, sees off the streets, is only 10% annually. So you put 90% of your effort to take 10% off of the streets. Mm -hmm. Once you switch that around, okay, and instead of that, you know, let's, let's address the use problem. Let's address the prevention, the use problem, yeah. the rehabilitation problem. I mean, because I hear that. If, if a guy brings in 10, 10 pounds of meth and nobody wants to buy it, whose problem is it? People are always going to want to buy it. I, I think the no, government has no, a no, responsibility. No, no, no. See, that's, though, that, yeah, I think that if you give the people an opportunity other than to be able to use it and address the social issues the right way, mm -hmm. not the handout, the hand up. Right. And okay? we used to do that with DOE. Yeah, okay. We can tackle the problem. We can tackle the problem. I don't know. I, I think if we were doing those, I, I think if we were doing those things, and we were also seizing what's coming. Sure, up. it would be fine. But we're not that. even doing any of those well, things. Well, you know that's where we're not are doing anything. anything. Well, well, they are doing it at well, the airport. Yeah, yeah they're doing it at the airport and the post office. Well, you know, forty pounds of meth yeah. is what they seized. I, I think that there, there there was an effort by the prior administration to try to get Guam to declare, declare it a high intensity drug trafficking Yeah, in this administration, the chief of police can't even admit we have a problem, which is a mm -hmm. big problem. And and uh, and the problem has only gotten worse. I think we need to go back to D.C. and talk to the Office of Drug Control Policy and, ex and explain what's happening here, because it's not only here, it's in the Northern Mariana Islands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is something that our congressman, and, I mean, we talk about our representative of the federal government, this is something that he should be well, uh, you know, informed about and something he should take to them, because the chief of police is just sitting around waiting for the high-intensity drug trafficking uh, board to meet, and I think they only do it once a year, so they didn't approve us last year, so now what? Yeah, maybe we need to. Maybe you need to put in a word you, with the president. Yeah, when you go but to D.C. Ab absolutely, absolutely. But it's it's 
territories and states campaign to try to be recognized as right. a high intensity area. We should all know about the fact that we're trying to get it. It should be the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. It should be the general contractors. It should be all the unions coming in and saying, hey, we have an issue. We have a problem. We want right. to join our efforts. We but need what to has changed, Juan? Now. So we were trying to do that last year. The only thing that's changed is this administration. So right. they brought in all their people, and all of a sudden, we don't want to be a high-intensity drug trafficking area. We don't want to, you know, police the drugs coming in at the port. So I'm just saying, look, what has changed? Like, what changed from last year to this year? Last year, we had Mandania Drug Task Force making all these busts, you know, busting people who are dealing and bringing yes. in drugs. First thing the administration does is disband it. And, I mean, I'm just banging my head Re against the wall. Reorganize. Yeah, reorg or whatever they want to call it. But I, I'm just not seeing it. And, you know, I, I agree that treatment is, a, even on the treatment, we don't even have a treatment center on Guam. Yeah, yeah. Where, where are we going to put these people? And yeah, I think we, we have need a to Guam have a, like, a okay. wellness center, and we have Lighthouse Recovery Center. Let's give you continue, so long as the demand is there, there's always going to be the supply. Yeah. And, again, you know, I spent many years in drug enforcement. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, and, and I see this. When you spend 90% of your resources to get 10% off the streets, the math does, just doesn't add up. You've got to The math change. doesn't add up. Okay. But you, you, need, yeah. you, you, yeah. you need to do both. You I do. Because yeah. 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 if, yeah. if I come in and I bring $2 million, $5 million worth of drugs, and the most I'm facing, my biggest risk is six months in prison. <laughs> you know, right. it's sort of hard to get problem. the guy next door not to want to do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, the yeah. other guy's going to go, wait a second, I'm, I'm working months. at, I'm, I'm being a teacher at the, at the school. I'm yeah. dealing with double shift. I'm getting $34,000 a year. Or I can go on one flight and come back here and make $5 million. Yeah. And the worst thing that can happen to me is six, like six months. months. Yeah. Right. You know, then, then what disincentive is that? And I, I, I'm completely all about rehabilitation and try to deal with the patient and the need, try to get them not to start, yeah. which is the biggest issue. But it takes a lot of time and it's ex it, it is expensive. It's something we've got to deal with. But if you do not do it at trying to prevent the drug from coming in, they're going to create new addicts. Yeah. And I, you know, I agree with uh, Senator Frank, I, but, but I'm just saying... Yeah. Addiction is an issue, obviously rehabilitation are their issues, but when you have people who are so addicted that they're breaking into people's houses, doing home invasions, mm -hmm. that to me, that's just when you turn the page and I'm like, I'm sorry, you can be addicted to drugs, but the minute you threaten other people's safety, mm -hmm. life, you know, their property, then you just gotta be dealt with in a criminal way. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is you don't see anybody down at the legislature you know talking about yeah. treatment or like, talking hey, about drugs we have a major drug problem here we don't our you public safety chair that. won't even you, mention it during our, our uh, budget debates it's not being mentioned at all yeah no they haven't turned the page on drugs yet but there's no mention <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean I, I just don't understand i felt like and meth is a huge problem the governor said it's catastrophic so what is the disconnect between what the governor says Police and what the chief force. of police says and what changed since last year to now? It's not like the problem went away. I feel like it got worse. So you guys think about it, and we're gonna right. talk about it <laughs> next after party. Okay. okay, Mama Bree said that's it, guys. <laughs> yep. No more overtime. No, because we could we could go on. You're right. This. Yeah, it is a big problem. Yeah. So. Okay. So hey, that's uh, been the after after uh, party. Um, when are we doing this again? Maybe four days. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting to get uh, Frank's uh, grade. Hey, so for uh, Juan Carlos of the GOP, Mr. Sanjay Sharma from the GFT, and uh, former Senator Frank Blas uh, Jr. Yeah, from Barragada. From Barragada, there yeah. you go. This has been for my uh, partner, Sabrina Salazar-Mantanani. This has been the After After Party. My name is Chris Estadios. Bye.